to Tallahassee. This is a very interesting game. Memphis is coming to Florida State. And if I had told you, Ari, on August 1st, that Memphis would only be a five and a half point dog in Tallahassee, what would you have told me? Wow, Memphis is going to be really good this year. Wow, and Memphis could and, be the team that that makes the playoff at the G5 spot this year. Those are all true statements, by the way, probably. Yeah, yeah. and but uh, I might have said, oh, no, DJ didn't work out. <laughs> that <laughs> is, I think that's the layup response. I- exactly. So that's the question. They've had an, off, an open date to figure some things out. Florida State, 0-2 in ACC play, which is – Amazing to me that, that you can be 0-2 in conference play after week one, but that's what they were. Mm-hmm. Then they had this week to figure this stuff out. And I just don't know. I don't know how this is going to look. Because are they going to change things around? Is Brock Lynn going to get a chance? Is DJ starting and maybe it's a, qu- a quick hook? Or is it that they're, they've, they've figured some things out and are just better? Or are they the same team that played Boston College and Georgia Tech? In which case, I think they might lose to Memphis. You look at the first two games on Florida State's schedule and the things that caused them to lose, I don't know, are repairable in a bye week or an open week. Like, is that, what do you fix? Like, well, how do you, right. And, what you, and what's the plan? Exactly. And, you know, we talked about their defensive line. Remember, you had the people saying they were the best defensive line in the country going into the, the Georgia Tech game, and clearly they weren't. We knew they weren't as deep on the D-line as last year. I think the problem is that not only are they not as deep, but the, the, the guys who are starters have not been as good. But then also, because they're not as deep, those guys get worn out as the game goes on. You saw Boston College, and, and I think Bill O'Brien, having been an NFL head coach, I think it helps that – he understood to do this like because NFL head coaches understand you just attack the weak point over and over and over again. And that's your best bet. He didn't try to get cute. They just kept running the ball and running the ball and running the ball, knowing that Florida State's D line would just completely wear out and collapse by the end of the game, which it did. You could play prize picks anytime you want because they've got the NFL. They've got the WNBA. They've got darts. They've got esports. You name it. But the board is going to be stacked for college football early in the week, and you can start having some fun with college football and prize picks. So you play $5, you get $50 instantly if you use the code staples. Prize picks is the most fun daily fantasy game in the world. You're playing against the number. Uh, there's going to be a, a total number of yards for, let's say, you know, a receiver or a quarterback. So in, in the game that we're talking about with, with Kansas and UNLV, uh, Jalen Daniels, they'll, they'll be probably, he can throw for more than or fewer than this many yards. He can run for more than or fewer than this many yards combined rushing and receiving. And you decide, is it going to be more than is it going to be less than you pick that square. You pick at least two squares. You can pick more than that. And the more you pick the higher, the potential payout. So download that prize picks app, use the code staples, play five, get 50 instantly. And also all year or all month long. You play Caleb Williams with the Bears, and as he throws for a yard, you win that square. So he did throw for a yard. It was actually kind of a close one. It was close. He threw for a yard. The Bears won. He didn't throw for a lot of yards, but he did throw for a yard. So you're going to get him every week this month as well. So download the Prize Picks app, code Staples, play five, get 50. Memphis, they can run it, but Seth Hennigan. Yeah. is a lot better thrower of the football than Thomas Castellanos. So Memphis is going to try to try to throw it around a little bit, but I'll I'd be curious to see do they stick with the run and just keep pounding even as the throw game if the throw game is working, do they keep pounding because that's how you win in the second half against Florida State. You we I, I realize a small sample size, but we've seen it both times with quarterbacks who probably aren't as good at throwing the ball as Seth Hennigan. Now, yeah, he can't run like the two they've seen. Yeah. But and those two runners really hurt them. Yeah, Haynes King and yeah. and, and Thomas Castellanos did hurt them. So maybe maybe it's just not having the fear of a running quarterback, but I, nothing Florida State has done this year has given me any confidence. Yeah, all I'm going to say is you're going to give another team that's what we think is pretty good points. 
If you're Florida right. State, you're not giving anybody. They can't get points. How are you, right. who are you giving points to? Exactly. Exactly. So I'm taking Memphis. I'm also taking Memphis, which yeah. is probably means Florida State's going to win by 20. Yeah, well, I, I took App State. You know, it's one of those games, I think, sometimes, too. And I don't know if I'm there yet because I'm not. Like, Clemson's response to what happened to Georgia at against Georgia in week one is what teams that are going to win 10 games might do. Mm -hmm. But, like. Florida State is just bad. Like I'm not, I, I'm not waiting for Florida State to wake up and rattle off eight wins in a row. Like I, but, I'm past that. Right, They're so just I, not a good the, football. The problem team. is I've seen this before under Norvell when they lost to Notre Dame and then lost to Jacksonville State, and like they had a horrible start to that year, but then they got better and better as the season went on. Like I, I actually, I know he's capable of pulling a team out of something like this. So that's where there's a lingering doubt in my mind that they're just yeah. bad. I don't know that they're just bad. But I think they have a quarterback issue, and I don't know that that's something you can fix unless you go to somebody else. And I'm well, not sure. And, they're and the thing is, like, yeah. I don't know how confident they are in Brock Glenn. I think this time last year, if you'd asked people in Tallahassee, they said, "Yeah, Brock Glenn's going to be the successor to Jordan Travis." This is before Jordan Travis got hurt. I think you saw Brock Glenn in the ACC championship and in the Orange Bowl, and now that confidence has eroded somewhat. So they're not as quick to just say, "Well, DJ's not working out." But but I will say this. If the reason they're not contemplating a quarterback change or they're not serious about making a quarterback change is because they're worried about how much money they're paying DJ or that because they brought him in, they have to don't, don't do that. Your job is to win games. Yeah. Whatever you think is going to win you the most games, do that. Now, it might be that, that they don't feel like Brock Lynn's better. And if that's the case, then you're in you're in big trouble. So, all right. Well, we, we're both taking Memphis in that game. Who boy. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.